that's uh, it's a specific is one of a number of specific types of treatment for uh, truncal reflux in superficial varicose veins. The, the thing is that unless you understand what uh, varicose veins are, understanding what the the venous ablation treatment is and, and what it's designed to do is is quite difficult. So. Um, Effectively, in practice, what it means is putting a needle into uh, a large vein that feeds surface veins, passing a wire up, putting uh, a series of local anaesthetic injections around that, and then heating the vein up from the inside so it shrivels and closes. It's an equivalent to uh, stripping, which is a slightly pejorative sort of old fashioned term for when you um, make a cut in the groin and physically pull the vein out. Um, and, but this is a sort of modern equivalent. Um, there's a, it's called endovenous because it means inside the vein. Um, and once you've got the wire inside the vein, um, you can use this so-called uh, radio frequency ablation, but you could also use laser ablation. And um, people talk about having their veins lasered and that's effectively exactly the same as having radio frequency ablation. But the question's a little bit difficult to answer without having a better understanding of what varicose veins are uh, first. But, uh, but in essence, endovenous ablation of varicose veins is a minimally invasive way of treating varicose veins, equivalent to laser ablation, I suppose. So EVLA is effectively laser ablation, endovenous laser ablation, and the, there isn't actually that much difference between radio frequency and laser ablation. The setup is exactly the same. You use the same needle puncture, put the same wire up the vein. The only difference is you grab a, the wire that you, you put in, you attach to a laser block box rather than a microwave box. And with a laser ablation, that's EVLA, you have to wear sort of laser-proof glasses and be in a laser-proof theater, while with radio frequency ablation, you don't have to. Uh, from the patient's point of view, the, the actual treatment section is about half as about, it takes about 45 seconds to a minute with EVLA and about one to three minutes with radio frequency ablation. Um, but seeing as you, do, you don't, the patient doesn't feel it because of the local anesthetic anyway, that's not really a big difference. Um, there have been a, two proper comparisons head to head comparing EVLA and endovenous ablation. And they've shown that they both give an extremely good, better than 90% closure rate to the vein, and they're equivocal, uh, they're equivalent. Um, in terms of post-operative complications, the only thing that the paper showed is that uh, the laser ablation, that's the EVLA, slightly more painful for the first five days with perhaps another about three or four extra paracetamol taken over radiofrequency ablation, but both treatments work extremely well and I think can be seen as, uh, as equivalent. Um, I'm happy with both, uh, but I tend to use radio frequency ablation because it means I don't have to find a, a laser proof theater. Uh, the procedure involves um, putting a needle, at the, obviously you, you, you have a, a patient who's appropriately consented and understands what's going to go on. And then they, they lie on a theater table um, and this can be done with uh, no anesthetic, just, lo <clears throat> just local anesthetic. It can be done with uh, sedation, or you can even do it under a general anesthetic, whichever the patient's preference is and depends what facilities uh, they wish to use. Um, you then put a needle into the vein under with an ultrasound guidance, pass a wire up the inside, and then pass the either the EVLA or the, uh, or the uh, radio frequency ablation catheter up until it's about one centimeter from the top of the leg where the varicose veins frequently stem from. Uh, you then put local anesthetic injections, a series of injections, usually about 10 or 15 of these. That takes about five minutes and it's the most uncomfortable part of the operation. Uh, it's having the local anesthetic put in. Um, I personally use bicarbonate in it to buffer it so it doesn't sting, but it's still, I suspect, the, the bit that uh, if there's no sedation or uh, anesthetic involved is the most uncomfortable part. But once the local anesthetic is in, you then uh, plug the wire into a box, um, which is, as I say, either a laser box or a endovenous ablation box. Um, and then you do another check with the ultrasound to make sure the tip of the probe's in the correct position. And then you do a series of, um, you do a series of, uh, 
treatments down the vein to close it off. Then you repeat it, which takes, as I say, between one and maybe three minutes. And you then uh, repeat the ultrasound scan to make sure it's been successful. And that's about it. So the most effective treatment for varicose veins is absolutely depends on the, the patient's varicose veins and the other underlying medical conditions they have, if they have any. Um, so uh, the varicose vein treatment has to be tailored to the individual's um, uh, pathology and the individual's anatomy. So to get the most effective treatment, you firstly have to make a good assessment. You have to take a decent history. Um, you have to look at the varicose veins and uh, assess them properly. And you have to have a, a duplex ultrasound, which shows uh, what the cause of the varicose veins is um, and why this patient has them. Um, there, are, there are two parts to varicose veins. And I think to understand how you treat varicose veins and how you get the best uh, outcome from varicose veins, you have to separate the two parts to, var to varicose veins. So a varicose vein is a, a dilated su superficial vein, um, an abnormally dilated superficial vein. And it stretches not only in its diameter, but also in its length. And because its length gets longer, it becomes tortuous. So this is why the varicose veins uh, twist a bit because they're getting longer in length as well as in diameter. A superficial vein is a vein that's outside the muscle. That's it. So in the legs, deep veins are inside the muscle, superficial veins are outside the muscle. However, we all have a layer of subcutaneous tissue between a muscle and a skin. And there's a lot of the varicose veins actually sit under that, far enough under the skin that we don't actually see them. But they all eventually have to connect into the deep system and drain into the deep system to get it back to your heart. Um, so in terms of treating varicose veins, the ones that you can just see on the surface are a bit like the leaves on a tree. Um, they don't tell you where the root is. So you need an ultrasound scan to see the, where they've actually come from, where they've linked into the deep system. And so in, in the most effective treatment for varicose veins is to know why they've got them and to treat them appropriately. And you could broadly split treatment into, the, into two sections. There's the bit you can see, removing the veins you can actually see on the surface, and then there's the bit that you can't see, which is removing the veins that connect those uh, surface ones to the deep veins, which, uh, which need to be checked to make sure they're working normally. Um, the surface ones, there's two ways, broadly speaking, of treating them. Uh, you can inject them with um, a, a, a sclerosant, which is a sort of detergent solution. It's been around for about 40 years in various formats. Um, and you can either use it neat or uh, you can dilute it or you can turn it into foam by uh, squishing, squishing it with air between a, a few syringes till it froths up to increase its surface area for the uh, concentration, for the amount of chemical you're using. Um, it's uh, re relatively effective at surface ones, although as you can imagine, you just, you put a needle in and you inject it and you sort of smooth it. It's, it's a little bit hit and miss as to where the foam goes. Um, it works by uh, irritating the side wall of the vein, causing it to become inflamed and so that the two walls stick together and then the vein will, uh, won't be able to open again and will be destroyed by the body. Um, therefore, it, it causes an inflammatory reaction from the body so the area goes hot and red afterwards. Um, if any red cells get trapped within that foam, then you can get pigmentation afterwards with the iron that's in your red blood cells getting deposited in the skin which is, um, uh, which is why uh, foam sclerotherapy is associated with about a 20% pigment, significant pigmentation rate in the post-operative phases, uh, which can persist for a long time or, and even be permanent. Therefore, people would say that foam sclerotherapy of large varicosities, whilst effective, um, often needs to be repeated to get a, a complete treatment um, and uh, isn't necessarily the most cosmetic approach. The alternative dates back to Galen, who was a Roman physician, and he described using ice from the river to freeze the skin, making a nick in the skin and pulling veins out. And in 2000 years, although the kits got better, the actual technique hasn't changed. It's called avulsions or phlebectomy, 
um, and you can call it ambulatory phlebectomy, which means you walk in and walk out, but effectively it's pulling veins out. It might sound brutal, but it actually represents about 80% of all virus superficial surface varicose vein removal that's done in the world. And it's the most cosmetic way of doing it because all you get is a, a little nick, literally about one or two millimeters long, which, which heals without a scar um, and the veins removed from it. It does, however, it is, however, more uncomfortable and requires some form of operating theater to do it in. And those are your sort of two alternatives for treating the surface varicose veins. The veins that connect those to the deep system, um, they're, they're, they've got nickname, they're called the truncal veins. Um, they're broadly speaking split into the great and the a short, super, a short saphenous vein system or the GSV and the SSV. One runs up the inside of your leg and goes in at the groin, the other runs up the back of the calf and goes in behind the knee. If either of those two are affected and usually one of them has to be for you to have decent varicose veins, then if you don't treat that vein, all that happens if you get rid of the surface ones is that new leaves grow fairly rapidly, usually within about 18 months. And if you hear of somebody who had varicose veins treated and they, in, and they just came back within a couple of years, then that's usually what happened. They had a few injections or a few avulsions, um, but the underlying cause wasn't treated and so they just returned. If you treat the underlying uh, truncal varicosity successfully, then your recurrence rate drops greatly down to probably about 10% of 10 years. You can't make it zero. Um, there is a ge great genetic predisposition to these. You usually have inherited them from your mom and your dad and we can't change your genetics and stop you making more in all cases. But we can greatly reduce the risk and get rid of the ones you have. Um, in terms of treating the great or the short sphenous vein, this is where you come into things like laser ablation, also known as EVLA or radiofrequency ablation, commonly known as venous or uh, endovenous ablation. And these are where you pass wires up these veins to heat them uh, so they shrivel up. And that's the most common way to do it. There are lots of other alternatives, including uh, traditional stripping, where you physically pull the thing out, which we, we is quite brutal to take out such a long section of vein. And we, we very rarely do it now, although there are very occasional indications for it. Um, you can also uh, put foam sclerotherapy into the truncal veins as well as the surface ones. You use, have to use slightly higher concentration and higher volumes. Um, and whilst you're far enough away from the skin that you're not gonna get pigmentation, because these are, these are below the surface, um, there's a greater chance of the foam getting into the deep system. So there's an, a slightly higher associated deep vein thrombosis risk associated with this treatment than with, with other treatments. However, lots of people get uh, good results with this and it's, it's an alternative for uh, outpatient style treatment. Um, Although it's for in head-to-head -head trials, its success rate is about 70% rather than um, the EVLA, EVLT, or traditional stripping, which probably are more like 95%. So having to repeat it if you have foam sclerotherapy is not unusual. Um, and then finally, there are the sort of small print, sort of uh, weird and wonderful ones. Um, so you can have it glued. So you can use a sort of super glue where you put a little tube up the inside and, uh, and Called, I think it's Vena Seal is the uh, trade name. And you push a little bit of super glue in it and then squash the vein flat so the walls stick together. Um, it's a very expensive way of doing it because the glue is very expensive. And you have to be very careful not to let any of the, the um, glue drip into the deep system where, it's, where it causes a real problems if you get any of the glue in the deep system. But with, with care, you can get reasonable results with, with that as an alternative. Um, then there's some uh, alternatives to try and use foam but less concentration and sort of scoop it round um, uh, with a sort of a, a whirly a wire that you can put up and spin the foam to, to get it to distribute better. And then there's even a steam machine that I've, I've heard of and seen demonstrated, but never actually uh, used myself. So there's lots of different methods. If you have to know what the common methods are, about 90% are in the UK and the US uh, would have either venous or uh, laser ablation. And I think currently it's about 65 radio frequency to uh, 35 laser, but the, 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 those treatments can be seen as virtually equivalent. 